Hello everybody, uh, Todd Woodbridge here again as we continue to catch up with our Australian players and as always it's a great pleasure to have the man himself, John Millman, join us. John, first of all, tell us where we find you and how you're doing. Oh look, I'm in Brisbane. I'm going alright, Todd. Um, obviously, unprecedented times has, has uh, created this uh, this opportunity for players to spend a little more time at home than what they normally would. It's a little bit different, but I've gotten used to the the home life now, and and things that aren't going too bad here. What what are you doing to keep yourself occupied? How are you keeping busy when you're not training? What sort of training are you doing? Oh look, I've got the home gym set up. I've got every app under the sun with the with the indoor training bikes. I'm, I'm connecting to a few of the Aussie players who also have those those apps and and um, just trying to stay fit. You know that they're a big part of my games. Obviously, the, the the physicality that I bring to the court, and so I don't want to lose that. And it's quite easy to do so when you're spending a fair bit of time, uh, you know, away from from the the day in day lot day out grind of the tennis tour, but. Trying to get on courts every now and again when I can, hitting a bit more private um, when you know it permits with the protocols, which it does here in in Queensland. So just trying to do enough to keep my eye in, and uh, apart from that, mate, um, just kind of living a, a slightly more normal uh, mundane life, I guess. What's it been like to be home for this long? Because I know from my own experience, as what is going to be planning out with no Wimbledon and the tournaments are edging further away from us. I, I've never been home for an Australian winter since I was 14 years of age. How are you going to cope with that sort of stuff? Yeah, it's disappointing to, to miss out on Wimbledon, I tell you. And, and um, yeah. I saw a tweet of, of yourself where you haven't missed out uh, for Wimbledon for a very long time, showing your age there a little bit, Todd. <laughs> oh, dear, I don't feel that <laughs> <laughs> But that's a, a real heartbreaker for me because... Um, as you know, every time that you walk through those beautiful gates of the All England Tennis Club, it's uh, it's the mecca of tennis, isn't it? So, uh, look, it's a little bit different. I've had a couple of experience in episodes where I've spent a bit of time on the sidelines, with, you know, trying to recover from some pretty significant surgeries. But this is a little bit ask? different. That was one of the things I did want to ask. Cause I I want a refresher of actually what you've been through physically and what injuries, what operations, because I think we forget the journey that you've taken to get here. Yeah, it's been a little bit of a, a slow process for me. It, it took me a while to, to kind of get my body right and get a bit of consistency where I could really build my ranking and become a, you know, week in, week out professional tennis player. I've had the three surgeries, two on the shoulder, the second shoulder surgery, I think back in maybe 14 or 15, was quite significant. That was um, a, a slap tear, they call that. And some players actually don't come back from that. So I had an amazing team around me that not only were so knowledgeable, but also kept my motivation levels quite high. Uh, and, and then I had the groin surgery. And I was already established in that top 100. So that one was slightly easier to come back mm -hmm. from. But all this was just created this time on the sidelines, which isn't easy. Um, but this one's completely different. You know, my body's actually in not a bad place. But the tough thing about this is is that motivation. It's yeah. it's not having an end date in mind. At least with the shoulder surgeries and the groin surgeries, you could kind of earmark tournaments where you thought you could get back to. But but right now, there's really so much uncertainty as to, and, and a lot of speculation also as to when we will get back playing. So it's a little bit trickier, but I think setting daily goals, daily routines um, can really help keeping that motivation nice and high. So how, how have you managed to do that with, with your daily goals? Because I think one of the things that I, when I look at uh, the current playing group out there, go, okay, it's a pretty good time where you could be working on different skill sets, you know, maybe trying to add to your game because yeah. you've got this extended period of time. Are you looking at, at it like that? Look, Todd, I'm not going to be a serve volleyer anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to push you to that extent. <laughs> Stick, mate. Stick's been pushing me for that for, for a long, long time. Gary Stickler, who was uh, my childhood coach who really developed me, he's been pushing me into that direction for a long time. It's not going to happen, but look, I, I, there are little things that you're always looking to improve, and I think that's been something that has really helped me throughout my career. I, I've never really wanted to stagnate. I'm a big believer that the game of tennis is constantly getting better. It's constantly evolving, and you have to evolve your game with it. Otherwise, it kind of goes past you. Uh, 
So look, there are different areas that I'm trying to look to improve. I'm, I'm probably not quite getting that on the court yet because it is tough to get court time here, but there are little areas that I want to identify and get better at. But what you can do is you can uh, get stronger in the legs. Uh, you can get stronger upper body. Um, you can do the little things that sometimes don't look as if they're going to make much of a difference, but based on experience um, yep. and drawing upon that experience, it does help. One of the things you just touched on a, a little earlier there was um, the, the experience of not knowing when you're going to play. And um, you, you, you talked to the media in the last week or so about the possibility of getting the Aussie players out on court when in Australia, and it looks like we'll be ready probably before a lot of other countries internally, domestically, to be able to play some competitions. Um, that was some pretty good thoughts that you had. So tell us about those again. Oh, look, I, I just love thinking and talking about tennis, and I'll do it to, to just about anyone. I just love the game. Uh, and like you touched on, I do feel as if Australia right now, and to touch wood, we're trending in the right uh, trajectory that we, we might be able to beat this sooner rather than later. And, and, and hopefully, in doing so, um, the restrictions can ease a little bit and we can get back to playing tennis. But tennis isn't going to be how, how we know it because I'm a big believer that the ATP Tour, all the WTA Tours, can't resume until you know we really defeat this thing globally because so much of tennis involves a lot of international travel. Um, I do feel as if it's a really good opportunity right now, though, to, to develop the game domestically. I think as players... We're thrown in the face of the Australian media for one month a year, and that's during the summer of the Australian tennis. So fans of tennis, fans of sport, um, fans of big events like the Australian Open, they really get um, to see that for one month a year. And then for the rest of the time, we're away overseas. So I do feel as if it's a real opportunity here domestically to grow the game and to, to get on the forefront and on the front foot. Um, to do that. And I, I threw the idea out of, of having a bit of a, a team's competition, um, you know, interstate rivalries, but not just the current crop of players. I think we've got such a rich history of our former champions and it, what, it's what, yourself included, um, so and it's what makes... <laughs> oh, you'll be right, mate. We'll get you on like a synthetic grass or something. <laughs> But we, I, I think um, it's a great opportunity to celebrate out both our history of tennis, but also the group of players that we've got coming through right now. And I think it's a pretty strong group of players, both men and women, and uh, come together and, and uh, play a bit of team tennis. I think team tennis is, is the most exciting form of tennis. I, I grew up playing a lot of club tennis in Germany and in Switzerland to, to kind of keep the finances going. And I like thriving in that environment. Um, and then Davis Cup's obviously the pinnacle, in my opinion, of team tennis. So uh, I'd love to, to get all the former champions uh, involved, the current crop of players, and really have it out. Um, maybe I'm just a, I'm a bit of a kid in that sense because I, uh, you know, I love playing with someone like Leighton Hewitt at Davis Cups and Paddy growing up in Australia, in Queensland, and, and having Paddy Rafter, um, you know, here, there, and everywhere, and have it, seeing the success that he has. Um, I just want to get on court with them, to be honest with you. I'm pretty selfish. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think you've got great merit. I think we've got a good opportunity that we're going to get a little in a in maybe a few months' time. So I, I I don't know. It's put the the seed in my mind that I've got to get out there and get against the brick wall and do a bit of training. There's no doubt about that. Um, well, while you're yeah. at it, mate, you talk about growing, you know, my skill set, and if, if you can teach me how to have your volleys, mate. Yeah, I'll right. very much appreciate it. <laughs> no, no, we, I'll be happy to get out there and do that. So we, we, there is a, a deal coming when we can get to see each other.